Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my little crafty corner of the world. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I also appreciate all of the comments and suggestions and tips that people have been leaving in the comments. I love reading other people's tips. Um, and I try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Sometimes you just get a thumbs up from me or a heart or whatever. I don't always have time to comment and I apologize to those that I have not commented on or have not commented in a timely manner. Um, I understand that sometimes that seems upsetting to some people. I apologize. I have a life. <laughs> I do my best. Um, okay. In my previous video, I spoke about having this idea and it came about from watching Christine over at Create and Craft with Christine doing her calendar. Um, I know that Corinne and Susanna from um, Vintage Blend Studio are doing a calendar a month kind of, um, I haven't looked into the whole thing, I'm sorry. I, I just haven't looked into the whole thing. I was doing other things and concentrating on other things, so I haven't had time to watch all those videos yet. Um, so I'm not, I know they're like, um, there's a diagram that Sus or a drawing that Susanna has done for each month, um, but I don't know how that's coming together because I really haven't watched those videos. Um, but that tweaked me, that and doing the Stitch the Season, which is coming to a close, Stitch the Seasons, which is coming to a close. Um, and uh, so I have June, July, and August for that one. And then I'll be done because I started with autumn. And I'm thinking, okay, what else can I do? And I wanted to make a calendar for my, for my wall in front of me and just something pretty that I can look at, um, something handmade and stitched, of course. And I went through all of these ideas. Um, I started with this one. I'll, I'll zoom you in. I started with this one. This was just a simple, and it's in pencil, so I know it's a little difficult to see. But I started with this one, and I had the basic idea. And I thought I was going to use buttons here. But then I was struggling with how I was going to do the numbers, um, how I would attach them because every month starts on a different day of the week and you have to move all the numbers around. I thought, how the heck am I going to do that? Then I went to something bigger. <laughs> this is a legal size piece of paper. Let me see if I can tip you a little bit. There we go. See if that works. Um, that sort of helps with you seeing the pencil. So this was, you know, like, oh yes, this is what I want. And then I thought, um, I still can't figure, I mean, I've struggled for over a week, maybe two weeks, on how to get the numbers so that you can switch them around and change them every month. Because I want this to be a calendar I can use year after year. And month after month, I don't want just an advent calendar or something like that. So I had those two ideas. Then I went really big. <laughs> and I was drawing it all out, measuring, and making it way more difficult than it needed to be. And I thought, I'll do all of these numbers, which is 31, because some months have 31, so you got to have that 31st date. Um, five rows because when you have 31 days and it starts here, it's going to end, you know, somewhere around here. So then I thought, well, then I have to do the days of the week and each month, which is not hard. You only have to do 12 months and stitching numbers and letters is not hard. It goes fairly quickly. Then I thought, well, then I have to have 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028. So I'll just make all of these spare numbers, but then I got to go to three because and then you got to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine again, and uh, and a zero. And I thought I'll do them all separate. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> again, I make things way more complicated than I should. And this would be a really big area to stitch. I didn't want to go that big. I wanted to go back to something a little smaller that's easy to stitch for each month. 
Um, it could be seasonal. You could do seasonal. Um, but I want to do something, just something small for each month. I even thought of taking a three inch hoop and just doing a circle and maybe doing it that way as something different, you know, like something this size. Hold on, something stuck to it. Something that size and just doing a little scenery in a circle because a circle is kind of cool because you're limited on your space and it would just be something small. And I want to be able to work on a month for a month and then move on to the next month. But my idea is not to do this in the month. It's to do it ahead of time. So this is June as I'm filming this, June 2024. So I'm thinking June I'll work on the calendar base. July I'll start working on January. Because... It's hot, it's sticky, it's humid here in the USA, and it, what better time to work on a, a winter month than in the middle of July, right? Um, you've heard of Christmas in July, right? So anyway, so then I, after thinking magnets, and I bought some magnets, and they're too small. I thought I measured how much, but millimeters and I are not always... You know, it doesn't comprehend in my brain um, because I grew up on inches and feet and yards. So um, I got these magnets, but they're they're tiny. They're like this big. And I said, nope, <laughs> those are not going to work with a folded over piece of fabric. And I started with muslin, but muslin is just too, too thin and floppy. Um, so I pulled out my fake felt sheets. You know, this is what we get in the U.S. It's it's made of plastic and other stuff. But they're felt. It's crafting felt. It's not 100% wool. That's what I'm getting at. So I thought, well, I was going to do them like this, right? And then I thought, well, now I have to back it to, to put whatever's on the back. Velcro would be really ugly because as you take... As you take a date off, right, you have a date here. As you take it off and you have to move, say, the first over to Wednesday, whatever's on the back here is going to show. And whatever's on the back over here is going to show when you have to move the dates around and there's some empty days with backings on them. So I went to my basement, to my <laughs> to my shop in the basement <laughs> where I shop for my supplies because I have so many different supplies of things, sewing and weaving and spinning wool and fabric and yeah, all the things, uh, paints and markers and pencils. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went down there and I have these two packages of snaps. Now, uh, obviously these are very old, especially this one. This one's ancient. Don't know where I got it from. Don't know how long I've had it. Don't think it's from my mom because I didn't take any of her stuff with me um, when I left home. I was 18, 19. I had just turned 19 and uh, when we got married. And so, um, but this was a, a new card. I just took this one off, had never used it. Don't know how old this is either because $1.35, pretty sure you can't get a set of snaps for $1.35 anymore. I'm not even sure what store this came from. Hancock Fabrics. And they're not open. They closed like, I don't know, 10 years ago. So um, this says size 1020 and 40. This says size 2. There is nothing nothing the same about these two things. <laughs> so I'm I'm assuming this might be the two the four zero on here. I, I don't know. Maybe it's the one zero. I, I don't know, but the two zero. I mean, if this is one, this is two, and this is four, this is not the same size as that at all. So I don't know sizes. I tried to measure. I used millimeters again. I used, um, or maybe it's centimeters. I, see, I don't understand it. I understand eighths and sixteenths and quarters and inches and halves. Yeah. So, um, but when you look online, <laughs> that's not how they come. All right, so I went to Amazon and I ordered clear snaps. Hopefully they're not this size. 
I'm hoping they're either this size or this size. And I did make one as a sample. And you can see, <laughs> let me show you. This was the last one I made yesterday. This was the first one I made yesterday. You can see I'm not consistent in my size when I stitch. No, I'm not drawing the numbers on. I'm doing them freehand. So it's going to look handmade. And I'm okay with that. Yes, I am. So, um, yeah. So this is going to be, this is sort of my mock-up. So I need five, five rows. So one, two, three, four, and five would be up here, right? And then I need seven rows across. So that would be like that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So I took um, one, let me back you back out again. I took one large sheet of felt and this is um, nine inches wide by 12 inches long. Got it in probably Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that. Michael's, I don't know, don't remember. I have several of this shade of it. And I thought, well, you know, I'll use that. I'll use that. Then I, as I said, I started with the one, hmm, what I do with it? The one little square. And I thought, well, I have to have a back on it because I don't want the threads to show through the back. And I don't want the snap to be, when I sew it on, to show it through the front. So I took this snap here and I tried it. And of course, I sewed it on backwards to begin with. <laughs> had to take it out. Had to, And I, before testing the snap, the back of the snap on it, I um, had already stitched the front to the back. And I thought, okay, now I have to take all that stitching out and undo the snap. So I got the snap on correctly. I had the, what you might call the male side, the side with the bump on it, sticking up. And I thought, why why won't it go in? I had it, you know, arse backwards. So anyway, um, I think this will work. I'm hoping this will work. I really am. And what I'm thinking is, um, I'm going to try and be more consistent with my numbers, of course, as I make them, but it's okay because they all fold in half. And what I'll do is I'll sew this, the clear snaps on and I will, I'll just make another 31. It's okay. And I will um, then stitch them up like I did this one. And I will stitch the back of the snap to that part there. And so these will all be like this, all folded in half, right? And so I can get five rows easily and seven across. Then I had this strip left over from cutting the one sheet, cutting all of my, all of my, uh, these are one by two inch, by the way. I don't think I told you that. So you can make them as large or small as you want for your project if you want to join me on this. I had this piece left over. That's going to be the days of the week. Sun, S for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that should fit just perfectly across there. Then I'll do the months on a piece like this. This is an inch wide by a smaller ruler out so it's not so hard to manage. About four and a half inches. And I know I can fit every month on there. I think December is the longest month. And then I'll just do the years ahead of time. That's one by two inches. So that's just another one of, you know, another one of these here. And so I'll just cut some more of these out of the second sheet. And I'll do 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028. As many years as I hope to be alive. <laughs> so they're all done. <laughs> and, you know, they could always be done later on. Um, if this calendar outlives me and somebody wants it, hey, great. Um, and I will probably attach everything with the clear snaps because the clear snaps I'm getting and they arrive today and I'll put a picture of them at the end of this, um, when they arrive and show you what they look like. But, um, I can get the iPad and show you which ones I purchased. Just give me a second. I should have pulled that up. Hold on. 
Let me get them. Okay. They are bet betoplin, betoplin, betoplin. 100 sets, plastic snaps, buttons, clear sew on snaps, fasteners for clothing or crafts, 10 millimeter, 0.4 inch. I'm hoping they're a quarter inch. I, I'm hoping that's what that means. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. But they're, they're clear. Oop, that didn't work, did it? Come on. There. They are clear sew on snaps. And I thought, well, that'll be really good because... um. You really won't notice them that much sewn onto the back of this. So the other thing I'm probably going to do that I'm, oh, there's the little square I was looking for. Um, and then that, let me finish this thought first. Um, so up here is where I will be able to uh, make my scenery. You know, whether it's just a bunch of flowers, whether it's a, a wintry scene for the winter months, I don't know. I, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. That's what's going to be my little challenge. If I did want to do it something like in a like a, a four inch hoop and, and stitch maybe three and a half inches round, I uh, yeah, that's that's a little over four inches. So it'd be a little smaller than this. Um my hoop is somewhere. Where did I put my hoop? Hold that thought. <laughs> I don't remember where I put my little three inch hoop anyway, or four inch hoop. Anyway, if I wanted to do that, I could either extend this, I could stop this here and use a different background. Um, if I just put this like that and then used something different up here, I could do that. Of course, I wouldn't fold this. I would cut it off. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet. And really... You know, these could be smaller. This doesn't have to be this wide. Um, and maybe move this down a little bit and do that. And then I could do something round up here. And I could snap that on at the top and bottom, maybe the two sides. Or I can do a rectangular one and just put a snap in each corner. These could just have a snap on each side here or at the top um, on the back side. And then same with this. And then this, I'd probably put snaps in the middle and snaps on each corner here. So I think, I think that will work. I think it'll be a really cute project. Um, the other thing I was thinking is I'm probably going to back this with batting. Um, everything will be removable. Uh, this may wear out over time. I don't know. These may wear out with handling over time. I don't know, but I'm, I just, I just got this bug in my bonnet, uh, bee in my bonnet, and I really wanted to do a calendar, and this will give me something special to work on a little bit every month for the next 12 months to take me into next year, and because the stitch, the season ends in August, so I thought if I start this now and work on it June, July, then in August, I'm sure there's other projects that'll come along. Roxy Creations, they're doing their stuff. Um, they have, they're changing it up. They've already come out with what they're doing for the next six months. Um, you know, they've they've given us a sneak peek and a an idea of what they're doing for the next six months. That's exciting. Um, I may join in on that. But for a couple months now, I've been struggling with extra projects to do. And I really wanted to come up with something of my own that I'm not just following along with somebody else. And I struggle with that. As you can see, I make things very complicated. <laughs> and then I find the simple answers. And then it falls into place for me. So if you want to join me, I would be very pleased with that. Um, if not, I hope that when I show these videos that you'll just pull up your own projects and stitch along with me. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just here to play along with you, um, enjoy my craft and hope that I keep you company while you're enjoying your craft and that, um, we're making art together. That's what's most important to me. And I hope that you will join me on it. Um, 
So if you want to see, I will show you how I got started with these numbers. Now I don't have the snaps yet. So of course I have to, you know, wait for those to sew the snaps on. So I'm just doing the numbers and then I'll sew the snap onto the back and I will stitch this together. I can't show you that part right now, um, but it, it's simple, right? I'm sure you're smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> yes, so I'm just using the size eight black perle, um, pearl, perle. I love perle, perle. Anyway, and I'm just free forming the numbers, like I said. Let's see, I think I left off with 22. So I'm just, what I do is I put one that I like in front of me, like I really like this too. <laughs> and then the one I make like that. Now you, you can definitely see the difference in the sizes. I mean, how silly is that? But you know, I got more free form as I went. Zooming in, okay. So what I do is I just fold it in half and I kind of crease it really well. Put a knot in my, in my, um, thread. Get rid of the long tail that I tend to leave. And I fold it in half and I need 21, I said. Yes. So I start over here and I think, okay, I have to leave myself a little bit of space for the stitches um, to stitch it together. I have thought that I might go around these with a decorative stitch. I don't know yet. Um, and even though these numbers are bigger and the squares are the same size, I don't know. They they come out better when they're bigger. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'll probably redo the 31 <laughs> because it's way out there as far as being the size it is. So I just, I picture a two in my head and spacing. And then I just start doing it. Now watch, it probably won't come out nearly as well. Oops. And put this down this way so I can see. I remind myself because if, okay, Martha, you're on camera. Of course, it's going to go sideways, right? Yep. And then I just do tiny when I, you have to do curves. I just do really tiny because, you know, curves are hard. <laughs> Anything to do with numbers is usually hard for me, <laughs> even if I'm just making them. Numbers are not my friend. They are, but not always. Not if my brain has to figure something out. Okay, so just, and if you don't like it, pull it out. I've pulled several of them out and, and done them again. Does it leave little marks? Yeah, but who's going to look that close? I mean, seriously. Okay, and then I come down here and do a long stitch. When you can do a long stitch, do a long stitch. I did probably in an hour I, or maybe less, I did all of these. I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because I did this one ahead of time. You know, you can do it in front of TV. Let me come down here. Here, and I come here. You can do it while you're watching other people like me on YouTube. <laughs> you can do it, you know, just sitting in the evening, sitting with friends. It's not hard. It's really not hard. In fact, I have found this very zen like and very relaxing. Now, for the one, I just carry over, I try and line up my line, which I don't know. Sometimes I think I have crooked eyes. The bottom of my line. And you want to pull the threads fairly tightly because I want them to sort of sink into the fabric a little bit. Into the felt. I got fuzzies sticking in my hands. I usually record in the afternoons, but this morning I get to record before it gets too hot in here. Now, for the one, I just go all the way to the top with one long line. Try and get it straight. And that is not straight at all. <laughs> I 
Looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bear with me. And if I don't like it, I pull it out. I'm sorry, but that's what I do. I want it, you know, this is, I'm going to be looking at this every day. So I kind of want to do it this way. And there's a number of ways you could do this. You could do it so that you're doing a day at a time. I mean, you can make it your own way if you wanted. Oh, Martha. Like, seriously, why can I not get this straight? Because I'm on camera. A straight line. I'm just asking for a straight line here. Bear with me, please. As, I, as I'm very good at showing all of my own mistakes. All right, it's got to be right there. But this uh, later this morning, we are going, and then I put a little... dash on it there there there's my 21 so it's not quite as big as it's more like my 31 than my than my somewhere in between yeah there I, I'm okay if they're I mean the squares are all the same size so I'm okay if the numbers are not totally cohesive if you want to draw them on or whatever whatever makes you happy makes you happy makes you happy do your thing you know, but it's, this is like, this is the simple part. This, you might get bored doing it. I find it very zen to be stitching these numbers and I'm really enjoying it a lot. So 21. Uh, so as I was saying, I'll do one more and finish my story. Um, as I was saying, I want to go to Knitwit Yarn Shop and get some more of the Appleton's wool. But I gotta write down, that's something I need to remember to do, so I'm gonna put the box over here. But the Appleton's wool that I have is, uh, the other ones must be in a project. Oh, there's one. I'm gonna have to dig them out. Oh, here we go. I do have a red. I didn't think I had a red. I'm gonna have to go through these very carefully. Make sure I know what colors I have. But I'm going to ask her if she can order more uh, colors, um, more of a variety. Make sure those are all DMC. And I'm sure I have a couple of colors, maybe. I thought I had six. I have a green somewhere else. Maybe I bought five. And these were $3 a piece. So I have to write down the colors that I have. And then I'm going to ask her if she can um, get other colors, like some yellows and stuff. Maybe I just don't remember that they have them. But the lady that was working in there, okay, Martha, work and talk at the same time. The lady that was working in there isn't the owner, but today they're doing Stitch in Public Day. Um, and... Um, I'm not going for that because Tony's going with me if he didn't care about going. But he wants to go to the library and uh, look for, look in their bookstore there for used books. Um, so, <laughs> concentrating, sorry. So, um, I would take some stitching and go sit in the shop for a little while. But anyway, um, it's a little teeny tiny shop. She used to have a bigger shop further away. And I actually have sold my hand spun yarn in there in years, years, years ago. Um, but since they moved to Culpepper a few weeks ago was the first time I had been in there. Um, Tony was at physical therapy and I went into the shop after I saw on Facebook that they were carrying Appleton's wool. I was like, oh yes, please. <laughs> and I really do like the wool. Now I will say, um, in my, 
I think it's Stitch the Season project. Has to be. Because that's really the only other project I'm working on right now besides this. Oh, see? When it goes wonky like that, I take it out. Even though I thought I got it in the hole right there, it didn't go in. This felt is weird. It like grabs my needle in different places than I put it. I swear that's what's happening. So anyway, um, I, I took some of the DMC yarn and I separated the strands because I had heard that you could do that. But the strand of wool broke down really easily. And I didn't get to finish but a few stitches and it broke down. Well, that's not perfect either. But we're just going to... No, I'm not going to undo it. Uh, it'll be okay, Martha. Leave it be. It's wabi-sabi. There are no mistakes. There are only design elements. I do not like that too at all. <laughs> it looks like a Frankenstein too. <laughs> all right, bear with me. See, this is what happens when I talk. They come out usually much better when I'm just... Oh, see, now I can't take it out because it's it got embedded into the thread. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, we are going to fix this. All right. I'm going to start back here. I think that's where my problem started. All right, so anyway, um, when, I went, when I went in a few weeks ago, um, the worker that was working in there, not the owner, said that um, if I wanted more colors to come in and um, talk to them about it. So I am going to go there, but they don't open till 11.30. And the library bookstore opens at 11. So we'll go over to the library, to the bookstore. And I'm, <laughs> gee whiz. They don't all take me this long. As I said at the beginning, I make everything look harder than it is. It really isn't that hard. Let me concentrate here. Okay. I am struggling, and I did not struggle this much yesterday afternoon, honestly. I had fun making the numbers. So don't let what is happening with me deter you, please. It's not that hard. And if you need to draw on your felt and you have a way of drawing on it, um, go for it. I don't love drawing on felt. It messes up the felt and I don't always stay within the stitches. So yeah, so now I need to make a zero. So instead of starting at the bottom, cause I've done that before, with the 30. Where's the 30? My zero did not come out real great and I had to start it over and go from the top. So I'm just going from the top. Just don't pull too hard because you don't want your, this will happen. <laughs> don't want that. Or you can knot it and start over again. That's fine too. Black th size eight thread is easy to come by. So I'm not going to fret about using extra thread. I hear Tony downstairs doing something in the basement. And I don't know what he's doing. Sounds like he's going through things. He goes on these binges every now and then about throwing stuff away. As long as he doesn't touch my stuff, he's safe. He starts touching my stuff, then we have a problem. See, the more curves, the worse I am. But this is also helping me practice making numbers, which is also like making letters is also difficult for me. So letters are easier for me. So I need to practice numbers, and here I am. Now I'm practicing numbers on a project for myself. I mean, how many of us make projects for other people or to sell? Not a whole lot of us, I don't think. 
I think, isn't everything we do for ourselves. So the whole, you know, make something useful, that really appealed to me. I didn't do some of the projects. I am going to try and do the vessel, but mine's, this line is not going where I want it to, so I know it's going to look wonky. Hoping I can fix it here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, so the whole vessel thing doesn't appeal to me, but the bowl does. So I am going to make a bowl. I need a bowl to keep my clips in. Um, I don't even have any in this bowl. I think I used them all on another project. Anyway. Oh, it's on the spring project. You know, these clips. The quilting clips. Yeah. That's on my on my Stitch the Season project. So I need a little fabric bowl to keep my new extra ones in because the plastic box they come in is nice, but it takes up too much space on my desk. There. See? Not perfect. But I love it because I made it. Okay. So I will try. I don't know if it will appeal to anybody. I don't know if she does mail orders. I don't think she does. She's a small shop. But I will try and do a little filming or at least take a couple of pictures. The last time, the lady that was working there hovered over me like she thought I was going to walk out with a pocket full of stuff. I don't know. It was, it was very um, difficult. So I don't know if... There. There they are. I don't know if I'll get to take any pictures or do a small video um, while I'm in there. I'll try. But um, as I said, I don't think she does um, any mail order stuff anyway. So, yeah. So I hope if you want to join me, you will let me know in the comments if you think you will join me or not. But it's not as complicated as Martha makes it. So I will, um, I will see you in the next one. And thanks for joining me. If you think you want to join in, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and, um, subscribe if you haven't and let me know what you think. See you in the next one, everybody. Find your joy, happy crafting, happy stitching, and see you in the next one. Thanks for being here. Bye.